Welcome to Coleman Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street in the small business lenders who help it grow. Lance Sexton, good to see you. Delaney Sexton, Fraud Friday edition special guest, Jonathan Farr, formerly with Prime Capital Commercial Alliance. Jonathan, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get into that, Lance, I want you to talk about two important webinars that we're doing. Go ahead. Well, first of all, we have a webinar coming up on March the 14th taking care of challenging servicing actions on your SBA loans. You know, if we ask a poll question, Bob, Jonathan, Delaney, and we say, how many of you have more past due loans today than you had a year ago? Well, the people who answer the question honestly have quite a few more past due loans. A uh, big driver on that was a run up in interest rates. But the question is, when you've got a borrower who's struggling, when you have a borrower who's 30 days past due, what can you do as an SBA lender to prop them up and continue uh, their performance on the SBA loan? Guys, we're going to talk about stuff like workouts, offers and compromise. Offer and compromise, Bob, I thought went away back in 2010. It's back. So it's we're, back. We're going to talk about those types of servicing actions. Uh, if you're an SBA lender, you need somebody from your team on this webinar. And the other one we're doing in the following week on global cash flow, specifically for loans over $500,000, Lance. Why, why is this important? Well, it's even more important today than it ever has been because uh, borrowers have inflation. You know, Bob, you and I talked about restaurants uh, a couple of Coleman reports ago, talking about the rising cost of labor and food in, in the restaurant industry. Uh, we've had rising interest rates, so properly calculating cash flow in the underwriting process on an SBA loan, Bob, keeps it out of the special servicing <laughs> webinar uh, if you do the right job of calculating cash flow. So this also I, is- I, I a, love that. Uh, attend this one so you don't need to worry about yeah. the first. Uh, do the second yeah. one so you have to worry about the first one. Well, hey, you, let's need get... to, you need to attend <laughs> the first one to, to take care of the loans you have right now that are struggling, but the second one- uh, calculating cash flow may help you avoid there special you servicing activities in the future. Lance, thank you very much for that. Hey, Jonathan, welcome. Um, what did you do for Prime Capital Commercial Training Group? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Bless you. I, I was the uh, content manager and strategist for the marketing team. And you you worked with Chris for 10 years? Yep. Give us a sense of the different type of entities that um, are involved. Okay. Um, I think the big one that most people have read about to some degree or another was Prime Lending, Prime Capital Ventures, Prime, et cetera. <laughs> uh, that, that was the financial arm. There was Commercial Capital Training Group, CCTG. That was the training program that taught people how to be brokers and to help small businesses. There was FMG, the finance marketing group, and most of my time was spent on that end, FMG, doing finance marketing for businesses and other lending institutions and also doing the marketing content strategy for the CCTG graduates. What is what is the uh, status today? Are these are these entities all closed down? From what I can tell, um, they are empty offices with chairs. That's too bad. It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, they have they closed this. I think the last few members of the team were let off earlier this week. When did you when did you uh, leave the company? Um, March seventh was when I was given notification. So that Excuse was me, uh, February seventh. February February seventh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Celebrating <laughs> one month anniversary there. Um, Give us a. I, I want to talk a little bit about about Chris, but again, I want I want to set this up. Give us a chronology of when this all broke and how it impacted. I, I want to focus on the employees and how it affected you and the employees. Okay. Um, well, we started off going into 2024 
Achilles strong. NACLB the previous year was a huge success and we yeah, were gearing, gearing up for the 10th anniversary convention this year. Uh, in January, Chris had an all hands on deck meeting saying, you know, you may read some things in the news. We want I want to tell you. They're not reporting accurate information. Um, there are lawsuits, but I am working with the feds. Asterisk. All of your jobs are safe. No one has to worry. Let's push on ahead. And we all did. Yeah, that was that was that was beginning to middle of January. Um, not much further broke as far as headlines went until the beginning of February. Um, right after I was told I could, you know, clean out my virtual desk and leave, and then. Two days later, more people were let go, and it's been a steady outflow ever since. What yeah. was the what was the reason for your termination, and who told you this? Uh, the marketing director told me he apparently found out ten minutes before he had the call with me. Chris just sent him a text. Um. And there there was quite a bit of dead air in that phone conversation when I was asking why. Where is this coming from? The only response I got was an all encompassing. The company is restructuring. What um, what you're on the show, what message do you want to. Talk about. Well, uh, there are a lot of people right now, believe it or not, who used to work at those companies who are currently looking for jobs. Yeah. There are a lot of outlets that have been reporting that oh, there were only contractors, et cetera, et cetera. No, we we were all employees, unless otherwise specified. Um, and we had no idea what was going on. So you know, there are potential employers who also keep up with the news and they ask some very tough questions of prospective yeah. employees. And we never, we the only answers we're getting are from what's unfolding in the news right now and from your show, uh, because Chris has been radio silent. He's been radio silent with us. He's been radio silent with the graduates of CCTG and other clients. And, you know, if if I were to have one big takeaway from this, it's that a lot. A lot could have been mitigated among all parties if he even as a leader in the industry came forward and made a blanket statement to people with some sort of mea culpa i'm going to make this right no matter how it turned out that those words would have gone a long way with us and with his cctg grads and other finance relations that he's at how, how now, many how many employees are we talking about jonathan uh, I I would say a team of oh, twelve to thirty in total. Uh, some of whom, you know, we're talking everything from they were in the process of buying their very first house to having their first child. Um, you know, all of the big life plans spread yeah. out amongst the team and with no warning no one could make plans ahead of time and not to mention all of the cctg graduates uh who are expecting ongoing support and marketing 
and paid for that. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. How many people are we talking about? And these are loan brokers, Jonathan? These, uh, that is what they are trained to be, essentially, mm-hmm. loan brokers. Uh, you know, everything from blog content to social media to flyers for trade shows, things like that, or even walking them through the steps to close their first loan deal. That's not happening moving forward, as far as I know. It's too bad. How many how many brokers are we talking about? Do you know? Ooh, from the new ones going back to the ones who were still on our docket for for marketing support, I would say around three hundred or so. Okay. Wow. Let me ask you this: the 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 world changed for Chris in around twenty twenty two with this new product. Mm. Go into go into that product and describe describe what it is to our show, which are which are bankers. It's we're we're discussing the large balance line of credit. Correct. Um, between 2020 and 2022, everyone in the finance industry was pretty much doing the same, helping businesses get working capital to tread water, PPP loans, stuff like that. All of a sudden, I was given basic PR material so that I could write larger pieces on this line of credit. And I was looking at the line of credit and I had to question the upper limits of that line of question, whether that was supposed to be an M or a B. And I was told it's a B. And wow. I'm and I was thinking to myself, where is this coming from? We don't have, as far as I know, a financial partner that's working with us. This all seems to be originating from app from us or one of the entities and you know great deals you know everyone read about the deal that came out of south korea and everyone read about the deal they read about it twice in atlanta there was the initial we've closed the deal here's i'm I'm sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna cut you off there okay you gotta tell us about the deals all right Set set it up okay In South Korea was the first use of the um, large balance line of credit, which went up to, I believe, four billion with an additional billion, making it five billion. Um, No. And you only had to pay on what you drew. Yeah. No draw inspections, nothing. Uh, Very favorable. And a lot of our CCTG graduates saw that and they said, oh, we would like to offer this to our clients, too, because, boy, a commission on one of those would be super nice. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then in Atlanta, there was a second deal that I knew of that had this and that used this line of credit for what was going to be a gaming and resort high-end office combination development uh because atlanta doesn't have any gaming resorts yeah um and then that is what stalled out and spurred the lawsuit that became the headlines we know and love today. Which is, briefly describe that. Which is uh, the funding never appeared, even though the borrower had everything set up and ready to go. And the minutia escapes me. But the fact that the funding never came through as yeah. agreed to on this large line of credit is what spurred the lawsuit against Chris and the prime entities. The receiver is is alleging that there were $90 million in deposits put up by 12 different entities for 12 different projects that are missing. When was the first time you heard about that allegation? Um. 
about six hours after I was laid off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good, yeah. That's also what that's also when I heard about, you know, the FBI raid and I started digging through the actual lawsuit. I want to I want to change and, and and wrap up with with Chris. I've known Chris for a number of years. You obviously worked with him. As I've said on this program, I was shocked that this okay. was, was out of character for me. Um, two questions. Why and what was the end game? The why will always baffle me because he, you know, the two sides of Chris, he is a very calculated as far as I've known him up to this point, a very calculated business person. But on the other side, he's also the man who likes fast cars. Mm -hmm. I think we're we're seeing a melding of those two personalities. He took a risk on a very sharp turn and thought he could pull out into the straightaway at the last second. But he didn't clear the wall. <laughs> That's that's, yeah. that's tragic. It's tragic. Um, that's um, yeah. It, it's um, that that it is not. Uh, it's set in terms of why these things happen. Lance, you got a question for Jonathan? Well, I think not not as much a question, but I love what Jonathan Jonathan said earlier. When you have a fraud case of this magnitude, or any magnitude for that matter. There are innocent people that get harmed in the process being the employees. Uh, all these people were working, doing an excellent job, and suddenly they're told you're no longer needed with no further explanation. And then they step out into the job market because they're having that first baby. They're buying that first house and, and they want to find employment. And then all the press and publicity hits and suddenly they're damaged goods. And, and I think, you know, a takeaway I'd love to see people take is, hey, these people are finance professionals. They have skill sets that can benefit your organization. Don't let the fact that they work for guys. I once worked for a bank that got closed by the FDIC mm -hmm. and, and, and that didn't say anything about my skill set or what I can bring to the table. Uh, so long and short of it, I, I think that's the take one of the takeaways. It doesn't matter what size the fraud is. It's not just Chris, you know, Chris obviously is going to pay for what he did. But, allegedly, 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 allegedly. say that. <laughs> but the employee group is now left out in limbo and, and they need some support uh, to find that next step in life. And not only that, and I thank you for for reinforcing that. Not only that, if we want to see, you know, the commercial finance industry thrive going forward. then we need to rally, uh, look out for everyone in one way or another to make sure this doesn't happen again. Yeah. You know, I, I always say if one person thinks they can do it and not get away with it, the next person is going to say, I know where they went wrong. <laughs> And try it again. <laughs> well, and the, the other thing, Bob and Delaney and Jonathan, the NACLB conference, mm -hmm. uh, that absolutely needs to continue. I had an opportunity to speak in November uh, in Vegas at that conference, and it's an amazing conference. It's incredibly well attended, and it provides some good training for brokers. Uh, and I saw most of my SBA participant lending institutions that I know at the conference. So that's something that needs to be certainly resurrected and continued. Hey, oh, I, uh, Delaney's been awfully quiet oh. and we've been stepping all over her show. Her show's Fraud Friday. Delaney, um, comment, question for Jonathan. Well, you know, I originally had some questions, but the information you gave us was fantastic. I mean, you covered everything I wanted to know, but I really wanted to thank you for joining us and speaking with us. I'm very appreciative because in my position, I in as in my work in my school, I study all the wrongdoers. I study the damage they do, but I never get to hear 
from the tail end, the other side. Mm-hmm. So to have that insight is really meaningful. Well, yeah. what I, I I appreciate the work that everyone here has been doing uh, in getting this information out because a lot of people can't see it, don't know where to look. Articles, business journals, as as I've mentioned before, are behind paywalls. So the work you guys do has been amazing. I mean, you know, we talk, former employees, we, we get together and we'll do watch parties for Fraud Friday <laughs> and the other episodes because of the new information that keeps coming out and the great work you guys do. And Delaney, you might want to get a jump start to add a new chapter to the books you've been reading. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, we didn't even get to the news news uh, this week where uh, there are gun charges and drug charges to uh, certain individuals, and we'll we'll talk yes. about those next week. Which is again, it's it's a tragic spiral downward. Jonathan, thank you very much for your time. You. I appreciate you coming thank on. You. Took a lot of courage. Uh, thank Delaney you. and Lance, thank you. Thank you for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a good week. Everybody, weekend. have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you.